This is Keith. Um, it's Thursday, the 25th of February, second week of Lent for us. And uh, this Lenten talk, my goodness, my machine sending me messages and interrupting us. Here we go. What a crazy day. I know you have crazy days too. Uh, hot water's off in the house, so we were doing that. We had some chores to do. We had multiple calls coming in, multiple texts coming in, and I'm just five minutes late. What really frustrated that was uh, I went to log on to Facebook Live, and the normal channel that I use was not available. So then I tried a substitute channel through Safari, and that didn't accept this. So then I had to get back into Chrome and figure this out. So I apologize, but gosh, it's good to be with you. Uh, I want to make sure that you're aware that with the coordination of Chris Leffler and, and some other connections she has through WCTF, South Harbor Creek Church will be a streaming location for a night of praise beginning Saturday night at 8 p.m. Uh, these are national caliber and, uh, and renowned praise and worship bands and leaders, and there'll be an evening of worship and praise at uh, South Harbor Creek Church beginning at 8 o'clock. I think the doors open at 7.30, and please, uh, if you're able, make plans to join there. Uh, Saturday nights are kind of peculiar nights for me as I get ready for Sunday, but I'll certainly be at the church for some part of that evening, and I look forward to, uh, to sharing in that and seeing you there. We have a great service planned for you on Sunday coming up. A lot of activities. Uh, there'll be a newsletter coming out the first part of next week. So be sure to uh, make sure your address and email are available at the office if you want to get a copy of this. If you don't receive it, well, Monday or Tuesday, be sure to uh, call the office, 899-5962, and we'll get your email and we'll get it out to you. Also, we'll be sending out the Thursday Blast later tonight with, with immediate uh, agenda, uh, calendar, opportunities, uh, all kinds of news, talking also about the Sunday Sermon. Uh, I believe the Bible is the authority of my life. I believe the Bible is the Word of God. We'll be looking at these and other examples and questions about the Bible on Sunday. So please join us, whether in person or streaming, on Sunday. Now, down to the Lenten message for today. Will you bow your heads in prayer? Dear God, be with us as we consider the I am statements of Jesus in the Gospel of John. Today, I am the bread of life. Lord, anoint my words, open our hearts, and prepare our minds for the word you have for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Friends, let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in a place where yesterday's blessings were not enough. Have you ever been in a place where yesterday's blessings were not enough? You were blessed like crazy yesterday, but today you feel hungry and wanting more. The key point today as we consider today's text and message, and we'll close with a reflection. What does it mean to trust God for our full satisfaction? In the days of the Israelites and the Exodus leaving Egypt to go to the Promised Land, God provided for them manna in an incredible way to meet and furnish and, uh, and accommodate and uh, supply and sustain them every single day. But they had to trust. If they tried to hoard, it was no good. If they began to doubt and question, it was no good. They had to have the faith that each day God would give them what they need to do all that he's asked them to do. In today's reflection, we'll be looking at John chapter 6. We're going to see Jesus' role in meeting our needs. And we're going to see Jesus' example. And we're going to ask ourselves then, based on what Jesus has done, what is it that we should do as well? What do we need to do to be mindful of Jesus' way and Jesus' perspective and to begin to not only look at how our needs are met, but how can we increasingly become like the hands and feet of Jesus, that we might serve and provide and be like Jesus to the world, for he has called us to be his instrument. That's 
what Jesus does. Let me read to you from John chapter 6. Now the main text today is John chapter 6, 25 to 59. It's a big passage, and I'll give a summary of it in just a minute. But before we look at the passage, I'd like to look at the text that's uh, practically, well, immediately before uh, the focus of today. It's the feeding of the 5,000. The feeding of the 5,000 is the only miracle in the Gospels that are in all four Gospels. Many miracles or parables are in one or two or three of the Gospels, but this is the only one, in addition to the resurrection, the only miracle that's in all four Gospels. Let me share with you a bit about the feeding of the 5,000, and then we'll use that as a segue or a springboard into uh, looking at Jesus as the bread of life. John 6, chapter 1, or ch chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed the far shore of the Sea of Galilee. We're going to go see that in about a, a year from now. We'll be at the Sea of Galilee if you're traveling with us to Israel. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw signs that he had performed by healing the sick. You see, Jesus doing signs was a verification that he was the Messiah. Jesus doing signs and miracles was a, was a, a, a message that um, to the world, particularly to the Jews, particularly to the Jewish leaders, that Jesus was not a mere mortal, that he was the Son of God, that he was divine, that he was God incarnate, and that he was the Messiah. But they weren't seeing that. They were confused. The text goes on. When Jesus saw the great crowd of people, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread to feed these people? In the Gospel of Mark, in that telling of this story, uh, Jesus actually tells them, go feed them. He told the disciples, go feed them. Meet their needs. Now the disciples wanted to, to, to dismiss them. He wanted to dismiss the opportunity. And isn't that the way we are in life sometimes where we want to dismiss what it is that God really intends to do? I worry about that at the church. I worry that I don't expect enough uh, of our staff, of our people, of our opportunities. Because God has told us to serve the people of Harbor Creek, to serve the people of East County. And sometimes I think that Rather than stepping up and stepping in and claiming the promises that God has for us, I, I let us off the hook. And I dismiss the crowd so that we don't have to feed them. We don't have to exert ourselves. We don't have to exercise faith. And we don't have to do our part. So to that, I say I'm sorry to the church. And I will work better at, at holding us accountable as a staff, as volunteers, as lay leaders, as ministers of the gospel of Jesus, and we will lean into the needs that we see that are all around us. Now back to John chapter 6. Jesus had 5,000 men, we're told, presumably as many as 15,000 people when you consider wives and spouses and families. And Jesus says to the disciples, feed them. And they say, what are we going to feed them with? We don't have enough money for this. And the disciples then said, well, we have a, a, a boy here that we're aware of that has five loaves and two fishes. Wonderful, says Jesus. Give them to me. Bring them to me. And at that time, Jesus takes them. He holds them. He consecrates them. He blesses them. He breaks them. And in a time of prayer, the disciples are amazed, as is the crowd. The food is multiplied. Matter of fact, so much so that there was leftovers. Jesus asked them to gather the pieces that are left over. They gathered them, and there were 12 baskets with pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who did. 12 baskets of food left over. Five loaves, two fishes. Now, let me ask you, are we looking to God to satisfy our needs? As with the Exodus, the great I am, God provided for them every day. Yet they grumbled, yet they wanted different, they wanted more, they weren't fulfilled, they weren't filled up, they didn't think. 
but they had what they needed, yet they were still grumbling, grumbling, grumbling. And I'm convicted that I'm sometimes grumbling, grumbling, grumbling. Am I willing to trust God for my provisions each day? And I'm, am I going to be content? So already my mind is working as I look at the feeding of the 5,000. Now, in the course of the evening of that day, we have this story about Jesus walking on the water and across the Sea of Galilee and seeing his disciples. And then they arrive at the other side. And as they arrive at the other side, the crowds are amazed that Jesus is there. Rabbi, when did you get here? And Jesus answered them, very truly, I tell you, you're looking for me not because you saw signs. Now remember, the signs and miracles were supposed to be a, a signal that Jesus was the Messiah, that he was the promised one. They weren't seeing the signs. They, well, you know what got their attention is they ate some of the food. They experienced the provisions of Jesus. He says, you're here not because you think I'm the Messiah. You're not here because you, you recognize the signs that I'm doing as being a message from God. You're here because you got your bellies filled yesterday. And you're back here today because you want your bellies filled again. And they said, yes, that's right. What must we do to be on God's payroll? What must we do to get a gig like this? I mean, we eat like kings when we're eating the bounty of God's provisions. They're thinking about their bellies, and Jesus is thinking about their heart. They're thinking about their appetite, and Jesus is thinking about their soul. So Jesus tries to shift gears from the physical food to spiritual food. And he says to them, the work of God is this, believe in the one that God has sent. All we need to do for the this Christian life to begin with us, for, for Christ's spirit to take root in us, is to believe in the one that God has sent. Really? Is that right? That's right. Just believe. Now look at how they respond. What sign then will you give us today? They're still not getting it. They're still not getting that, that Jesus is, is, is identifying himself with God. As God said in the Old Testament, to Moses, and then in the Ten Commandments, I am. I am the Lord your God. And Jesus is trying to become clear to the people as he begins to reveal himself on the road to the resurrection. John 6 is the first revelation where Jesus begins to say, I am God. I am the provision. I am the source. I am the bread of life, he says in verse 35. And he goes on and, and explains to the crowd that it wasn't Moses that fed the people. It was God that fed the people. And I am. I am the Father. The Father is me. I know the Father. I've seen the Father. I am from the Father. I am here to do as God did in the Old Testament. But not to fill your bellies, although I'll do that. I'm here to fill your spirit. I'm here to provide a, a satisfaction of your soul, a satisfaction of your heart, to provide a peace and a contentment that is supernatural, that is not normal. And that's what we're doing this Lenten season, is we're looking at the I am statements of Jesus. Because in his declaration that he is the bread of life, he's identifying with the God of the Old Testament. I am the source of your nourishment. Just in, not just in body, but body, mind, and spirit. I am here to take care of you. I am here to provide your needs. I'm here to provide contentment. You don't have to worry about later today or tomorrow. Not just in your physical needs, but in the needs of your soul, in the needs of your emotion, in the needs of your spirit. Thank you, God, for being my all in all. Yeah, we still need friends. We still need connections. We still need all the things that as human beings we need. But God has set the stage and placed the table with five loaves and two fishes to meet the needs of your life, my life, and our life. He goes on in the text and declares in verse 35, don't you get it, folks? I am the bread of life. In the Exodus, they had manna. But now you've got me. You've got the real deal. You've got, you, you've got me. You've got God Almighty. And I'm here to be with you. 
Have you ever been scared and, and worried? I remember at times in my life I've been scared and worried, and then either Linda shows up, my dad shows up, somebody shows up, and all of a sudden I can rest easy and breathe. Oh, it's going to be okay. Jesus goes on to explain to the people where he is there to meet their needs in their spirit. They keep wanting to think about their belly, and he keeps wanting to talk about their heart and their soul, the things that really matter in the long term for all of us. Very truly, I tell you, Jesus says, believe and you will have eternal life. You see, Jesus keeps trying to, to take a, a real life example of not being satisfied, of wanting food, to the spiritual realm of being satisfied in your spirit. Here, the bread comes down from heaven, which anyone might take nourishment from. Isn't it something that, that Jesus didn't say, I am the grain of life, I am the seed of life? What Jesus says is, I am the bread of life. That means the grain has been broken and blessed and, 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 and formed, and the yeast has been added, and it has blossomed into a loaf of bread. The fullness of God is available to us that our spirits might be nourished and strengthened and provided for. Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you that unless you are nourished by that which I provide, that you, in essence, eat in or take in the body and the life of Christ, whoever eats will be provided for. Now, the people were freaked out because they keep thinking in literal terms. And, and Jesus sometimes talks in parables and metaphorical terms or illustrative terms that we might be getting understanding. And what we see in God's parables is that people that have their eyes opened, people that are receptive, people that are, are willing to, <clears throat> to consider the challenge of Jesus, all of a sudden begin to hear with God's ears and see with God's eyes. And as this passage finishes, just as the living Father sent me, I live because the Father, the one who feeds on me, will live because of me. So I ask you this Lenten season, are you willing to be nourished, to be strengthened? I want you to see, first of all, that as God said to the people of Israel and to Moses in the Old Testament, I am. Jesus begins in chapter 6 with seven revelatory comments, first in John 6. I am the bread of life. I am the nourishment. I am the satisfaction. And when you are satisfied with me, we don't need to be chasing after things, looking for fullness and looking for things that might satisfy us. For Jesus is the ultimate satisfaction. So this Lenten season, as we approach and reflect in our, our Lenten reflection, I ask you, what is enough? What is it that your spirit, what is it that your person needs? So you might take a deep breath and say, I am blessed. I am thankful. I am provided. Do you need to go use the credit card? Do you need to go see people? Friends, those are things that feed our belly, and we'll always be hungry. We'll always want more things of this world. But if we allow our hearts and minds and bodies to, to cross over into the things of the Spirit, to the things of God, we begin to learn that we can be thankful in all things. We can begin to see that, that not only is Jesus going to feed and nurture us, but as Jesus' disciples, as believers, as the church, Jesus tells us, as he told the disciples on the Mount of Beatitudes, go and feed them. And they say, with what? He tells South Harbor Creek Church, go and minister. And we say, with what? The budget's tight, the dollars are short, the people aren't there. Everybody just wants to eat, nobody wants to serve. So what can we do as small groups? What can we do as a church? What can we do as a church staff? that the needs that God has set before us, the needs in Harbor Creek, the needs of South Harbor Creek Church be met. So let this Lenten season, ask yourself, God, what is enough? God, when am I really satisfied and content and happy? When will we believe and not want? 
my learning and my lessons in my life have told me that I'm satisfied and content when I accept the gift of God. In Jesus, God meets our needs. In Jesus, God blesses us. In Jesus, we have no reason to hoard. For in the hands of Jesus, the bread of life, he takes what we offer. He takes what we bring. He breaks, he blesses, he consecrates, and he multiplies. So I encourage you as the boy with the five loaves and two fishes, and as the disciples, come to Jesus today, this second Lenten talk of this season. And bring yourself and say, God, I am yours. Break me, make me, multiply me, use me. And may I not only be fed, for I trust that I will be, but may you give me the capacity and the capability and the, and, and the passion to serve others. In the Lenten season, we often have disciplines that remind us and draw us closer to God. Sometimes we fast. Sometimes people give up things for Lent, give up meat on Fridays, and they eat fish. To be reminded, sometimes we give up a a, a habit or a passion or a food that, that reminds us that we're not dependent on those things, but we're dependent on God. So I would encourage you this week to think about fasting from something that you might say, I don't need this, for God is my all in all. Then I encourage you not only to fast, but to thank God for each day. Be willing to believe that God will provide for you today as he provided for you yesterday. Isn't it something that the men and the women on the shores of Galilee were fed to abundance the day before, that they were right back at Jesus' door saying, give me more, give me more. They kept thinking with their belly than rather with their spirit. Fast. Thank God for each day. Be willing to believe. And as we believe, be willing to act. And I pray that we focus upon seeing as Jesus sees the need, the opportunity, and the capacity to build. Jesus did not want to send the crowds of the 5,000 away. May we not send people away, but may we open our lives and serve as God has called us to serve. Not only that our needs be nourished, but the needs of those that Jesus wants to nourish, that we might be instruments and agents of God's love and God's grace. I pray this Lenten season will give you new capacity to think like Jesus thinks, to act like Jesus acts. And that in this Lenten season, we might fast, that we might then appreciate even more the provisions and the gift that God has given. Dear God, I pray for your blessings upon all those who might be sharing in this talk today or later today. Prepare us as South Harbor Creek Church and may we come to truly know you as the bread of life, the great I am, the God Almighty, Father, Son, and Spirit, who dwells with us, empowers us, and enables us to be like Christ, who intercedes for us before God and takes every need we have to the throne of God, that we might be nourished and strengthened. All these things I pray in Jesus' name. God bless.